How do you think things are going at the border, sir? Much Type better than much, much better than you all expected. <laughs> do you have any plans to visit no, the border? No, I think. <laughs> pardon me. Do you have any plans to visit the border? Not in the near term, no. Secretary Mayorkas said this morning that the numbers at the border have gone down since Title 42 was lifted. Are you confident that the numbers have peaked, that they'll continue to go no, down? Look, they are. They have gone down. My hope is they'll continue to go down. But we have more, a lot more work to do, and we need some more help from the Congress as well. It's never as good to characterize a negotiation in the middle of a negotiation. I remain optimistic because I'm a congenital optimist. But I really think there's a desire on their part as well as ours to reach agreement. Yeah, that's President Biden taking a break from his weekend bike ride in Delaware to downplay the very serious issue his administration is facing right now. Fox News contributor Joe Concha joins us now. Good morning, Joe. You know, uh, when I was trying to prep for this segment, the first thing I wrote down was the president thinks we're all stupid because he he's honestly he, he's out there riding his bike. He's eating ice cream. He's dismissing all of yep. these serious problems that's happening. And to be quite honest, when there is an American who's not really paying attention, they hear something like the debt ceiling. They don't really know what it means, but they see the president of the United States leisurely taking these strolls. They think, oh, well, there's nothing to worry about. So he's doing a good job. Ashley, this is why his approval numbers are currently at 36 percent approval. He's more than 20 points underwater in terms of approval versus disapproval overall. When you ask voters about the border, he's in the 20s as far as his approval. And the fact that he's on a bike ride, he's in Delaware every weekend, it seems, outside of, I think, one this year. The problem is that people look at this president and see him not working. When, when he was asked during that interview there, or during that gaggle, will you go to the border? No, I don't have plans anytime soon. And the fact that he is touting, that he is bragging almost, that, oh, the numbers are a little bit down from where they were. Where they were was an all-time high. Ask Jay Johnson, who's that? He was the Department of Homeland Security Secretary under President Obama. And he says that this is a catastrophe right now. The numbers are out of control. So just because you're down a little bit from an all-time high in terms of 6.5 million people coming into this country under this president illegally, and what that's doing to the health care system, education system, not just in Texas, but all over the country, that's a whole ball of wrong, Joey. You know, Joey, here's part of the problem, though. They, they ignore it, and it seems to work politically because, you know, the issues of the day include the border and a lot of other things. The issue in the long yeah. run is this election that's about to happen within, you know, a little over a year. And so we look at that and we say, can they just ignore it? And you can't get 50, 100 million Americans to worry about an issue that may not affect them as much. Well, Joey, that's a great point because the media appears to be alongside the Biden administration as far as saying, oh, the border, oh, that's not that bad. Everything's okay down there in terms of the fentanyl that's coming in and 100,000 Americans dying every year, particularly young Americans at this point. Barely a story in terms of national media. So, yeah, you make a great point in the fact that most of the media outside of this network uh, and, and a few outliers are, are t pay, paying attention and talking about the border, talking about fentanyl, talking about the fact that 182 people that are on the terror watch list have been apprehended at the border, and those are the ones that we know about, right? right. So who yeah. knows who's coming into this country? We talk about education, and we have test scores at a 30-year low, crime in American cities driving exodus out of New York and San Francisco and Chicago and many major cities, and, and, and obviously, obviously foreign policy, China, what's going on in Ukraine, the, that, that war that will never end with <laughs> Russia. We could go on and on, yeah. yet this administration seems to be everything's hunky-dory, Ashley, everything's fine. Exactly. I mean, and when people see that, they're going to think that nothing is wrong for people who do not follow the news. They're not interested in what's going on in America. But, Joe, Joe we have to get to this. We're, we're going to switch gears to yeah. uh, the former U.S. attorney, Brett Tolman, who wants to know why Washington, D.C. and the media are not asking more questions about the allegations of the Biden family corruption. Listen. It is the kind of case that was the bread and butter of the fraud and corruption unit at DOJ. We're, we're looking at a DOJ who refuses to prosecute certain cases now that have a political angle to them. This is the stuff I, I, I back up and I look at and I say, we're in bizarro world. This is DOJ, the heart of what DOJ really was organized for.
Joe, I mean, why aren't they asking more questions? And another thing, isn't there a trail for money? There's receipts, right? There's yeah. actual emails. Yeah. There's actual bank receipts as it pertains to the president of the United States, his not just his son, but his entire family, as far as profiting in China, Ukraine, Russia, Romania. For, for services, we still don't know exactly what they did for all these energy companies when they have no actual experience in energy. That's the big question here, guys. Is the sitting president of the United States compromised by our biggest adversary in China or in Russia or by Ukraine? Again, we have the receipts. We see actual evidence. The question is, why is the Department of Justice taking years upon years yeah. to go ahead and do their job? That's that's the bottom line. Yeah. What's going on here, guys? Uh, we have no idea, and hopefully we find out. Joe Concha, thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.